we have discussed the method of making decisions with probabilities by knowing the probabilities of the state of nature uh, occurring. So we are able to combine the payoff and the probability information into a value called expected value of the decision alternative. And then we maximize our expected value by choosing the decision alternative that gives us the highest expected value. Now it is possible to represent the payoffs and the various decision making process using a more graphical way to describe them and that's called the decision tree. Decision tree offers us a more graphical way and a more chronologically oriented manner because uh, the more to the left of the decision tree the earlier will be the decision making um, uh, time position or, or event the later of the more to the right um, that a particular um, note is being drawn in the decision, decision tree will correspond to an event that occurs in the later part of the timeline. So a decision tree has three elements, right? A decision note, an event note, and a payoff note. And then they are connected by lines that don't form a circle. So maybe we can look at an example. Um, yeah, so uh, we have two symbols, one for decision, one for chance event, a circle. And for payoffs, for clarity on, on written uh, uh, solutions, we sometimes do not have rounded rectangles because in haze, rounded rectangle might look like a rectangle, might therefore look like a decision event. So we can just write the number clearly and that's good enough. So in essence, we have square and circle and the links. Okay? So using our, our table of um, payoffs just now, we can redraw the table of payoffs like this. Okay? So first we have to make a decision. If I were to choose D1, right, then I will face the possible outcomes S1, S2, S3 with the corresponding payoffs 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. If I were to choose D2, then I might encounter S1, S2, S3 and receive the payoffs 1 million, 0 0.6, 0 0.1 million and so on. Right? So we can represent them and we can also decorate this decision tree with corresponding probabilities because we also know that um, the probability of S1 happening was 0 0.1. Okay, So we're going to decorate it uh, here. Uh, let me just cross out the border, no border, no fill. All right. So the probability will be S1 and then S2, all right, uh, S2 occurs with a probability of 0.6 and S3 occurs with a probability of 0 0.3 and we can do that here. Notice that they add up to 1 as should all probabilities. Yeah. Okay, so we can decorate the probabilities along the lines with event nodes. The circles are the event nodes. Event nodes have state of nature emanating from them, right? Because uh, it is like a person having to face the need to make a decision, choose D1, D2, or D3. So if you choose D1, then you kind of wait for the events to happen. It's either you face S1 or S2 or S3. So you just wait. And the external environment will, will inform you, right, through either pleasant or unpleasant surprises, S1, S2, S3. And then you will face the consequences which will be getting more payoffs or less payoffs yeah so this is basically not having more information just the same table of information but done in a more graphical way all right and what we need to do about decision trees is also to make decisions and the way we do it is that we start from the right side we always start evaluating a decision tree from the right to the left and along the way, we update the EV, the expected value of all the circles and all the squares. For each circle, for each event node, for each chance node, we calculate the EV 
using the sum product of the probabilities, just like we have done using the EV method of decision making. For each decision node, we basically take the maximum of the branch EVs. All right, so it's very straightforward. If you just basically um, calculate the sum product, weighted sum of all probabilities and the payoffs, 0.1 times 0.5 plus 0.6 times 0.4 plus 0.3 times 0.3. So exactly what we did for the EV approach just now. So our, the EV, we say this way, the EV for the event node here is 0.38, right? Again, we say the EV for the second event node. We don't say the EV for D2 because D2 is a description belonging to the square to the left-hand side, all right? So we say the EV corresponding to the event node is 0.49. And finally, we say the EV corresponding to the third event node is 0.3. And finally, for the decision-making event, we say that the EV is the maximum of all the downstream EVs, which is the, point, the maximum of 0 0.38, 0 0.49, and 0 0.35, and therefore we pick 0.49. Hence, our decision is D2.